So here's the thing. I'm a huge fan of Bel Hadid, and I have been for a couple of years now. In fact, one look at my Pinterest board, and you'll see tons of her street style photos plastered around my account. So I've been thinking, why not take my love for DIYs and Bel Hadid's outfits and make a DIY Bel Hadid inspired outfit video? Hmm. Sounds like a plan. What's up, YouTube? If this is your first time seeing me, hi, hello. My name is Fran. I'm a fashion blogger and I love to create content on styling, trend reports, hauls. But my all time favorite thing to do is to give tips on how to cop luxury styles or just generally fun trends easily and a little bit more attainably. So, for today's very first YouTube video, I decided to do a DIY on Bella Hadid inspired outfits since as I said, she's a big style inspo for me. So on my blog, outedit.me, one of my ultimate philosophies or the main core of my blog is that anyone can channel chic for cheap. It's my motto, it's my whole thing. So of course, I had to give you guys some really, really easy and cheap ways to get the best model off duty or even model on duty style. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for our very first look, we have this backless cropped button down with a curved front. I actually did this DIY months ago with a plain button down, but for this DIY, I'm using a printed one. You'll also need a glue gun or anything to bind your fabric, some scissors, and a pencil. Now, what you want to do is lay out your top. Do this on a flat surface. Now you're going to trace out the front curve. So I decided to use Bella's photo as my main reference, so I was just tracing a curve with a slight point at the tip. I mean, you can just look at the photo and that's what you'll be following anyway. So I'm showing you my really, really light pencil marking so you can see that it went from underneath the underarm area to the other side. Now I'm just cutting a straight line right underneath the curve. I did this so I can just cut along the curve easier without worrying about using too much fabric or messing with too much fabric. So now I am actually cutting along the curve that I drew. And I have to remind you guys that you should only be doing this to the front piece. I made the mistake of including a bit of the back portion when I first did the other side but it's fine because I didn't cut off too much. So yeah, just make sure that you're only cutting off from the front piece and then cut off the flaps that you don't need, but don't cut on the seam of the back side. You want to cut outside the seam so that we can still use it for later on. And now I'm just repeating that step on the other side. Now you want to just flip your top over to the back side because we'll be working on the backless portion. So I am just tracing basically a concave around the back. I used the photo of Bella as reference again for this part, as you guys should as well. And you just want to make sure that you leave enough space for the straps at the bottom for when you tie it around your back, or rather across your back. So. Again, my pencil markings were so light and I was kind of just freehanding it at this point, but I'm giving you guys a closer look at what my drawing kind of looked like. You can see that for the flat or the strap area, I had it all flat and then it curved a bit going towards the top. So now what I'm doing is just cutting off the excess fabric underneath the strap. Again, this is not the strap, this is just the fabric I don't want included anymore. So at this point, when you finish cutting this portion, you should have exactly how short or how long you want your top to be. Next up, you want to pinch a hole down the center and start cutting around that space you want to be backless. So you define how much of your back you want to show or how little you want. So I'm just tracing my scissors around the drawing I made. After cutting along your circle, your back should look something like this. And what you want to do now is just cut that last strip down the middle to make the strap. So you can see that we have a lot of raw edges here. So what I did was since I only had a few raw pieces, I actually just cut those off. But you saw earlier that 
the rest of the edges that I cut were indeed pretty raw, so we're going to hem that. But first, I just finished cleaning it up. Now, this is the hemming portion, and this is really, really easy. This is honestly the easiest part of this entire process. You're just going to use whatever you wanted to bind to fold in your raw pieces. So when I did this, I just put a strip of hot glue and then I pressed down on the strip with a little notebook and I did this all throughout the top. So I did this around all of the raw pieces that I found and guys, I have to say that this is exactly what makes the top look less like a DIY and look a little bit more legit. It's making it clean on the edges. So make sure to pop on a movie or something because this does take some time. So this is what it looks like from the front. Now I'm going to be hemming the inner curve that we made since we are working on the back side. So I'm just doing the same thing, adding a strip of hot glue and then folding over the pieces that I want to hide. So I also have to note that your top has to be flipped when you do this you don't want to do this on the piece that's showing you want to be able to fold it inside to make things easier for you now i'm just working on the other side doing the exact same thing strip of glue fold over the process stays the same all throughout the hemming process So as you can see, I actually ended up hemming the tip of this specific part of the strap, unlike I did on the other side, but that's just a personal choice. And you'll also notice that this strap is much thicker than the other strap on the other end. But again, this was mostly because I was just eyeballing it and I didn't really mind if it was even. But of course, if you're more of a perfectionist and you want it to look a little bit more, I guess, professional looking, you can definitely make both straps equal. To me, it didn't really matter since I would be tying them together and pulling them together in the end. So now you're going to flip your top over to the front part and flip the front part on its back side. And you're going to continue the hemming process placing a strip of hot glue and then folding over the raw edges you want to hide and then pressing on it with any weight to keep the piece binded. Now I'm just doing it on the other side, repeating the same process. So in the end, your finished product will look something like this. This is what the back side looks like, as you can see, very much backless. I honestly loved how this turned out and when you have it on, it looks so, so, so cute. I'm so sorry, but you're now just going to watch me feel myself in this top. Absolutely love how this came out. Okay, so for look number two, we have this cropped white top that has some open eyelets. What I did was I took a lace up top and removed the laces and scissors. Now, I removed the laces off camera, so you'll also notice that I actually have a bodysuit here. Mine was so, 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 so tiny, didn't fit me well anymore, so I just cut a straight line along the midriff area or how much I wanted it cropped, so you can define how long or how short you want this to be. And honestly, that was just the hardest part of that entire process. Now you just want to stretch out the raw edges to make it fold naturally. And then you're done. That is your finished product. Super easy, but it ends up so, so chic in the end. As you can see, it looks so cute on. It looks exactly like Bella's top. 
I loved how this turned out too. I love the fact that it was so simple to make but it ended up so so cute in the end. Moving on to our final look, I'm so excited about this because we will be remaking the structured crop top Bella has on. This she wore in a Louis Vuitton event I believe, so y'all know I was hyped to make this on a budget and easily. So for this piece, what you'll need is a pair of bottoms with no belt loops, some scissors, and a hot glue gun or any sewing materials. I use jeggings by the way. These were really old ones and they didn't fit me well, so I felt like this would be a good match. So you want to lay out your bottoms and just cut it in the form of a skirt, meaning you cut right above the crotch area. You don't want the bundle of fabric that joins the leg area together. Now, if you have stronger scissors, you can definitely just fold your bottoms and then cut it in half. But since my scissors weren't that strong, I had to go slowly with this and kind of go piece by piece. So now that you have your kind of skirt-like fabric, you want to just copy the exact structure of Bella's top. So I'm using her photo as reference. And here you see me sketching out the structure, the shape, but as you've already noticed, this pencil is so light and barely shows up and I kind of realized it was useless, but I kept going anyway, just for your viewing pleasure. But honestly, I ended up just freehanding this and eyeballing my cutting process. So if you're more of a perfectionist, definitely draw this out on your fabric first. You can use paper to trace it, but since I was just doing this for fun, I don't know, I just decided to look at the photo and kind of estimate the cuts and the curves. So this is basically what your shape will look like. I'm just snipping off the excess piece that I didn't want. And you can see that the structure is kind of coming along. Like you can definitely see that it's starting to look similar. But now we're gonna work on the next strap. So what you wanna do is take one of your scrap fabrics from earlier and just cut a rather wide line of fabric down the middle. You honestly don't have to do this on the middle. I decided to do it on the seam just because it seemed like, <laughs> sorry, no pun intended, but yeah, it just, it looked like it would be a good idea, but you can honestly just take any portion and just cut your wide strip. This is what my strip looked like in the end. It wasn't even, but the important thing was that it was long enough to go around my neck. So now what you want to do is just kind of copy the way that the strap falls around the fabric. So I pinched the top corners of my base top and then I cut some little holes. Honestly, they weren't even that little and that ended up becoming a problem for me later on because when you loop, your neck strap through it and then you know you knot the back to kind of hold it in place if your hole is too large like mine obviously the knot will still go through the hole and won't bind anything together so i decided to kind of get creative with this and i just took some more spare pieces and then i used these spare pieces to forcibly ensure that the knots wouldn't move out so you can see that I used the glue gun to kind of act as a barrier to make sure that the knot wouldn't go outside of the hole. On this side, I decided to put the knot directly underneath the piece, but as you'll see on the other side, I actually ended up putting the piece right over the knot itself and not on top of it. There is no reason for this. I just thought it would be a good idea. And since we're working on the inside of the top, it's not like anyone would see it. Now I'm just 
hemming like we did in the previous DIY. Off camera, I actually ended up finishing hemming, but I didn't like how the shape looked like after I hemmed, so I put in some bobby pins in place to define how much I wanted to still take in. So this way I could further define the structure that I wanted. And it paid off because I think the finished product ended up looking so, so, so cute. And wait till you see it on, guys. Oh, I mean, you saw it earlier. But again, look at that. It is so cute. I love how it ended up. Not professional by any means, but definitely a fun little way to spice up my old jeggings, if I do say so myself. And that is it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is my very first YouTube video, as I said. So I hope you guys know that this is all just for fun. I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a girl sitting at home in quarantine with a lot of old clothes that I wanted to give new life, inspired by, of course, one of my favorite style icons. So I'd love to see your renditions on these DIYs. Please make sure to follow me on all of my socials. My Instagram is francis.melchat and make sure to subscribe to get updated when I make more videos, of course, by your suggestions. So I'd love to see your take on these DIYs. And if you want to see more celebrity inspired stuff, comment your suggestions down below and I promise I'll get into them. So thank you so much for watching and always remember, that anyone can channel sheep for cheap. Bye guys, see you next video.